Hey guys, it's Michelle, and today is Wednesday, February 28th, so it's the last day of February um, 2018. So, I think this is going to be my last little segment that I put together before I, like, make it all into one video, but I had some daylight, so I thought I would try to record really quick and um, kind of wrap up everything that I was talking about. So, um, when last we left our heroine, uh, she was working on uh, her hexes for the Tula Pink Hex on the Beach quilt. And I meant to bring the picture of what that looks like in here and didn't. So let me just, um, well, I'll just go ahead and talk, talk about what I'm talking about. So I was working in my little hexy kit out of Tula Pink Salt Water. And I managed to get the whole row that I had pulled. I managed to get all of those hexies basted. So I now have, um, it looks like three rows totally basted and ready to sew together, whip stitch together. So that's my next project is to um, to get those stitched together. And I panicked a little bit last week because after I realized, oh, well, I have three rows that are ready to go together. I'm not sure where I put my what's already together. I'm not sure where I put that. So I had to do a little bit of digging this morning, but I found it. So this is what it looks like so far and it's long. So let me just show you that. So, um, as you can see, these are all hexes, and I think maybe I showed this in one of my, I probably showed this in several of my earlier videos. Um, and so it's making this sort of, you know, chevron pattern as you go. And this is, I think this is rows like one through seven or eight. And, um, this is the top of the quilt. So it, and I will insert a photo here of what the whole quilt will look like when it's put together. So it's got all three colorways of the saltwater line. It starts with the coral and then moves into the green and then down at the bottom is the blue. So um, when I get these other three rows, sewn together and then attached to this. I think that puts me about, I think there's 40 rows total. That should put me at like row um, 10 or 11, depending on whether this is eight, five, six, this is seven. So I have eight, nine, and 10. So that puts me a fourth of the way complete math. So um, I'm kind of excited about that and I'm getting kind of to the tail end of the coral section and starting to merge into the green section, which I'm excited about. So um, I'm just gonna keep kind of working on that. It was nice to have something a little bit different to work on um, and something that didn't require a ton of concentration because I was just basically basting those hexes together and even whip stitching them together is not a big deal as long as I tend to stack them in the order that they go in based on the pattern so that I can just I don't have to look at my pattern I can just whip stitch them together so that'll be nice and then I mentioned also that I was going on a an in-town quilting retreat this past weekend uh, with the Dallas Modern Quilt Guild. So I did that. We went to a new retreat space that has opened up in town that was fantastic. It was wonderful. The, uh, the folks there that own the place are wonderful to work with, so friendly. Um, 
the space was large. It was super well lit. We had comfortable chairs to sit in. We had a large workspace to work in. There were cutting stations and pressing stations set up around the room. So uh, you didn't have to like bring your own, um, which was really nice. So I, um, and the retreat center is called, um, I believe the best little retreat center in Texas. I will, um, I'll double check that and I'll put it in the show notes. So anyway, uh, let me show you what I worked on. So I did work on my uh, little Tula Pink Elizabeth mini quilt and I finished getting it all pieced after I ripped out what I needed to rip out. I was able to get it all pieced. And then um, I had a little brainstorming session uh, with Diana from It Is Kismet, St it is Kismet Stitches about how to quilt it, got it quilted, and then I got the binding cut and um, and got it attached. I did the machine sewing attaching. I still need to pull that binding around to the back and hand stitch it down. So this is 95% of the way there. But I'm super happy with it. I love how it turned out love how it turned out. It's so, it's so pretty. I love the colors. I love it on that, you know, just white background. Um, this is the binding, obviously, like I said, it's, it has to come around to the back side, so it'll just have a little, a little peak there. But I just love how it turned out. And so I did a crosshatch pattern in the quilting um, strings and I think it turned out really nice and I used a Hera marker for the first time um, my friend Mary who was sitting next to me let me use hers to mark my straight lines on my quilt and it it doesn't it's not a marker like a pen it's almost like a, if you've ever seen a bone folder, it's a tool that you're basically using to kind of make those, those indentions in the fabric so that then you have a guide that you can stitch on. Um, a lot of people use it when they're doing hand quilting uh, to mark their, their quilting lines. Um, I know Siobhan, uh, has done that for her quilting and it's the first time I've ever used one but it was very helpful so I'm definitely going to be getting one of those but it allowed me to basically take my ruler you know make that mark on my fabric without actually marking it with a pen or a pencil or something which makes me nervous and then I had you know a guideline that I could follow which was great and the uh the fabric that I used for the binding is also from the Elizabeth line. And then the backing fabric that I used is also from the Elizabeth line too. And this is one of my favorite fabrics from that line. It's called Bats in the Belfry. And you can see the bats. There's another one. So they're all kind of hidden throughout here, um, which I just love. So I had to use this. And part of what prompted me to use this was that I had bought like a half yard or a yard of this fabric when I went to Glamp Stitch a lot just because I love it. Just because it has bats on it and it's Tula. Um, I didn't really have any plans for it. And I remembered that it had something else special. I had Tula sign it while I was at GLAMP. And I thought that putting it on the back of this mini quilt was like the perfect way to use it because, you know, then it's not on a bigger quilt where it's going to get washed or something like that. So I love that. So I'm very excited. And when I get the the binding wrapped around to the back too. I think it's that's gonna look nice. 
back there as well. So super happy. Once I get my binding done, I will show you the finished product. Um, but it's almost there. So I've got a little bit of handwork to do. I've got my hexes and I've got um, my uh, binding that I need to sew on. And then I worked on my nightshade quilt. I managed to get all of the cutting done, which I'm thrilled with. Um, I did have to, you know, have a little breather, take a little moment before I cut into my coven fabric. It's a little nerve wracking to have to fussy cut precious fabric, <laughs> but managed to do it. Got it all cut. Um, so Saturday, I basically worked on my Tula Mini, and then I worked on cutting out Nightshade, and I got all of it cut out except for one of the colorways of the Coven fabric, which are the cameos, the ladies. So then Sunday, I basically had all day to sew on it. So um, I'm going to insert a couple of photos of kind of where I got to on it um, but then I'll show you my actual blocks here so nightshade photos coming Okay, so you can see I got pretty far. I got uh, almost all of my blocks put together. And um, so here is one of them up close and personal. So you can see kind of the size that we're talking about. Um, I think these are probably 16 inch blocks if I remember correctly. So, yeah, and I think my background fabric that I picked with the moons looks awesome with it. So, very happy. And so, um, each of these is going to have the corners on it. You can see in my photo, I didn't get all of the corners put on, but I did get them put on um, the first couple of rows. So here's another one. Here's one with the spider blossom that has lightning bolts and skull and crossbones and spider webs. And I keep calling, I keep calling this lovely lady Belladonna Von Black. And this is actually Belladonna. And then this is Neptunia. Because you can see the anchor and her pirate patch. Um, and now, of course, the other lady's name escapes me. Um, here are some apothecary jars. more spider blossoms, storm clouds, more storm clouds, apothecary jars, Um, and then I've, so here's where my problem is. So I do not have the surround that I need for this one. I have all of the other fabrics that I need. Um, one of our, uh, lovely guild members and also guild president brought me some of her Tula stash and let me go through it and I was able to find a couple of pieces where I was short 
I was short on the purple spider blossoms and I was short on the blue raven lace, which is this first one that I showed you. That's the raven lace. Um, and so she bailed me out and I got the pieces that I needed out of that. But all that she had of the other fabric that I need was this little triangle which she gave me, which I very much appreciate because this may come in handy. So what I am missing is the blue colorway of the storm clouds. And I need a little more than a fat quarter, but a, not quite a half yard. So I've put a call out on the uh, one of the Tula Troops groups on Facebook and I've got one lady who is sending me some of her scraps and I'm trying to get the rest of what I need so that I can finish that last block and then um, some of the storm clouds as well as the other back the other fabrics are going to be in the sashing around the blocks along with more of the background fabric so in between each of these uh, will have uh, background fabric sashing and then it'll have squares of these other these fabrics so storm clouds if you got them and you can spare them I will take anything you have and I am willing to trade coven cameos if necessary so okay so um, I'm so 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 happy with what I got done I'm so happy with how this is looking I mean with every little bit that I did I fell more and more in love with it and I'm sure the people that were watching me on Instagram over the weekend were a little tired of seeing it but <laughs> I'm so in love with this quilt. I'm so in love with it. I cannot wait to get the whole thing put together because it is just fantastic. And um, the super, super fantastic news that came out, uh, I think on Monday, is that Free Spirit, the um, the subdivision of Coates and Clark that was being shut down, which is uh, where uh, Tula's fabric gets manufactured, uh, has actually been acquired by another company, a company, a family owned company based out of New York, um, which is so exciting because what that means is that Free Spirit brand can stay together, the designers that are under that Free Spirit brand can stay together. Tula and Anna Maria Horner and Kate Bassett and all of those folks. Um, the people that work at Free Spirit can all stay together, which is wonderful. So I'm so, so, so happy to hear that. And um, I think it means that we will have um, more good fabrics on the way. So, um, and of course that means De La Luna. So, anyway, um, so I had a fantastic time at the quilting retreat. Um, so much fun. I desperately needed it. Um, and I desperately needed to sew. I mean, just actually having time to sew and work on a quilt I have so missed that, um, no pun intended, but I've missed it a lot and I didn't realize how much I missed it. So my aim is to start to try to incorporate that back consistently so that I can continue um, to get some of these quilts done and have them where I can enjoy them and not just be fabric in buckets. So especially um, so that I don't realize like six years later that I don't have all the fabric I need. 
Um, the other thing I wanted to show from the quilting weekend is that my friend Karen was there and she made me this super cute fabric basket um, out of Paris fabric, which I just love. I just think this is the cutest thing. And then on the inside, it has Eiffel Tower fabric. And this is where I was putting all of my precious Tula scraps that I cut off, all of my little corners that I cut off, um, because I don't throw away anything that is Tula fabric. I don't care how small it is. It I keep it <laughs> because you never know when you need a little triangle of something, right? So, yeah, <laughs> I keep all of it. So, my little basket is, for right now, holding my Tula precious scraps. So, okay, stitching. I do not have a ton to show you because I'm still working on my model. Um, it is coming along well. I am falling more in love with it with every stitch that I take. I've been working on the chart for it. Um, it's already charted, obviously, because I am stitching it, but I've been working on my format of the actual chart. I've got the back page finished. I'm working on the front page, um, and I'm trying to... It, it's taking me a little longer to do it because I'm trying to do something that... Um, I can use going forward rather than just throwing something out there and hoping for the best and then changing it later. So, um, but that is going well and I will hopefully have my model stitch finished um, very soon. Obviously this weekend I did no stitching because I was sewing, um, but soon. So uh, I can't show you what I was working on there. But I wanted to mention uh, another little thing that is starting tomorrow. So uh, two lovely ladies uh, that are also into the dark and creepy um, of all things stitching have started a Facebook group. And the Facebook group is called Bewitched Stitching, I believe. I will put it right here. Um, I will also put their uh, IG Instagram names here as well so that you can see that. So they have started a Facebook group and um, invited me to join, which I was very excited about. And um, their first stitch along is starting tomorrow, March 1st. And so it's gonna go for three months, so through June. And then in June, they will have another stitch along that starts and they're just gonna do them kind of on a three month basis. So the first stitch along is the Edgar Allan Poe stitch along. And so we are all trying to find um, pieces that we want to stitch that are uh, Poe related. Um, of course, 99% of everything that's out there is related to the Raven, which I can't say I'm upset about, but um, a fun fact, I actually memorized the Raven when I was about seven, if that tells you anything, because I just fell in love with it. And so um, I can actually recite it by memory. So anyway. Um, because I was a strange child, but, um, yeah, so Poe, so there, the Poe stitch along is starting tomorrow. Um, I actually have something rattling around in my brain that I want to design that is related. So I may work a little bit on that. I don't know that I will have that ready to stitch or even finish during the sow but um, it's the perfect opportunity to, you know, play with that a little bit. And um, one of the uh, ladies that is in there is also a designer and offered up a, her um, pattern.
pattern, a Poe pattern, uh, as a freebie to the group. So you can go in there and check that out in the files section. So I did decide that I was, even though I'm kind of, you know, not wanting to start a bunch of new things, I thought that I would start something small that I've been wanting to stitch. And um, then with my excitement about doing all of my, you know, my little finishes um, for display, I thought this would be a good way to kind of kickstart a bowl or a basket or what have you. So I chose a piece that is by um, Cross-Eyed Cricut. And the chart is called Two Familiars. Um, and it includes this smaller chart um, of a raven. I will insert a photo here. And the little chart for the raven is called, I believe, Quote the Raven, which I feel like I need to put, you know, an H on there and take the E off. But um, I went to EGA last night and I like to have something to stitch on while I'm there. And I couldn't bring my model stitch, mostly because I didn't want to answer questions about it. Um, not that I felt like I was going to be spoiling things, but um, so I didn't want to bring that. So I started the post out early. So let me show you where I'm at. It's not much, I admit, but it's a little start. Um, and I'm using this piece of fabric that is kind of an unknown linen that I over dyed when I was testing out fabrics for Dutch Beauty. So, um, and I just loved how it turned out. Excuse me. Oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I just think it's a really pretty piece of fabric and I don't need much, but, um, so I've started the top of the Raven's head. I'm just using DMC and, um, I have my little Edward Gorey bat needle minder here that I made. So, yeah, so it's a little bitty start. And then when I came home, I worked on the model some more. Um, but I thought it would be really pretty on this fabric with that bright purple. So, and the golds. And this is my, I didn't want to take my uh, other stuff out of the Q-snap. So this is my Hardwick Manor, I think, hoop that I bought forever ago. Uh, that I never use, but figured I'd give it a shot. So that's it. Um, I'm hoping I can get my model finished stitching quickly. I will work on the Raven a little bit more and we'll go from there. So um, I'm not sure how long this is going to be since I did it in several different segments. Hopefully it is not going to be a crazy, crazy length. Um, so yeah, I think that's about all I have to say. So um, you can follow me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, etc. as Cozy Egg. All of the show notes for um, everything that I mentioned, links, etc are on my blog, cozyegg.cozyeggdesigns.com. And thank you for subscribing and commenting and liking and all that good stuff. I um, appreciate it. So, and go join Bewitch Stitches because it's a fun group, especially if you like the uh, dark and creepy and macabre and what have you. 
and certainly don't forget about dark 13 stitching on the 13th of every month and uh, dark October that is coming in October. All right. Bye guys. Hey guys, it's Michelle and today is Saturday, March 10th, 2018. Um, I had some daylight hours, so I thought I would record really quick. The clip that you just saw at the beginning of this video, I had intended originally to tack it on the end of my last video, but it just made it inordinately long. So I just saved it and put it on this video. So obviously I say in there otherwise, but so. What have I been working on since then? I have not done any more sewing. Um, I'm hoping to rectify that, but it hasn't happened quite yet. I have been stitching. Uh, I did finish my model stitch for my first design. I am going to run some errands here in a little bit and go hopefully pick up some stuff that I need to finish it. So that's my plan. And then once I get the finishing done, I can release it out into the wild. So I finished that. Um, and then also I talked about the Edgar Allan Poe sal that was going on um, <coughs> in the Bewitched Stitches group uh, that is hosted by Amy and Jen, Maui Jen and um, Dark Side Stitcher and Amy from Amityville. So they uh, started that group. They are hosting the SAL. The hashtag for it is EAP Macabre on Instagram. And um, so I mentioned I was showing, I, la, 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 la. I mentioned that I was starting, um, quote, The Raven by Cross-Eyed Cricket. It's in the booklet, Two Familiars. And so I started that um, on that Tuesday, so like the February 28th, um, which was like the day before the sale, or I fit started on the 27th, whatever. I started it a couple days early so that I had something to stitch on at EGA. And I finished it. So here is my piece. Um, when I was looking back at that last clip of video, I noticed that this fabric comes across a little weird on camera. So I'm gonna hold it back a little bit and see if that helps. But um, I finished off my Raven. I'm very happy with him. I made a few changes to the pattern and obviously I stitched this on a hoop, which you can tell hopefully when I iron him, you won't be able to tell that anymore. So, um, I had to change his beak colors because the gray that it called for was too close to my fabric. That darker gray on the bottom, I'm not super happy with. So I may go back in and pull that out and see if I can find something slightly lighter that still shows on the fabric. Um, I liked all of his little doodads here on his body. Um, I mentioned in one of my Instagram posts that he was starting to look like a Louis Vuitton. The only change that I made to those is that it did call for a dark and a light orange. I didn't like how the orange looked. I thought it was too bright. So I just used the dark orange instead. And then the uh, Nevermore down at the bottom was actually charted for gray. I obviously didn't do that. <laughs> I actually used um, DMC 814, which is the same that's up here in his body. And I like how it turned out. I'm very happy with it, other than possibly that bottom of his beak. So um, this was a super quick stitch. Oh, and the other change I made is that it had some, like what I, thought looked too much like confetti around him. It was more of these little doodads. 
just randomly kind of around him in the background. I didn't like it. I thought it looked a little too New Orleans Mardi Gras parade. So I left that off. I left it on his body, but I left off everything around him. So I'm really happy with how that turned out. It was a super fun quick stitch. I've wanted to stitch this piece for a long time. So I'm glad that I had the opportunity to do that as part of the sow. And then I finished that up, I think on Wednesday. And you know, I've been trying to kind of switch projects on Fridays as part of the Friday off the grid party. So I thought, well, what can I work on before I switch off? So I decided to pull out another piece that was in the same bag that I was keeping this in, um, which is Hallow Eden. And so this is, see, and that fabric looks a little weird there too. So the fabric I'm doing Hallow Eden on is more blue. It's still got a lot of gray to it, but it is more blue than this is, obviously. So I decided to pull this out. Um, Hallow Eden is a piece by Paulette at Plum Street Samplers. And it's an Adam and Eve piece that I have loved for a long time. Um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy and um, a couple other people, Andrea and Colorado, uh, are actually starting Garden of Erie, also by Plum Street Samplers, um, here shortly, which I have already stitched. It's actually hanging like right up there. Um, which is also kind of an Adam and Eve as well. Um, so I saw this in my bag and I thought, you know, I'm just going to work on that a little bit. This was a dark October start for me this past October. And when I started it, I had the I, the P, the S, and a little bit below that in this little doodad here. And that's all that I had done. Um, I had wanted to get down to the snake and I just didn't quite make it in the couple of days I worked on it in October. So when I picked it back up, um, I stitched the G and the H, the O, I finished off the snake, I did the V, and then I it was just starting on the Z. And then right here in the middle has this beautiful kind of stylized tree it's got little pumpkins uh, up here at the top and then beautiful kind of fall leaves. And then there's an Adam and Eve down at the bottom. So I love how this is looking. Um, this is another kind of mystery piece of fabric that um, my friend Sylvia dyed herself and gave to me. It is probably a 32 count as is this, I think, um, I use two strands over two on this and I'm doing the same here. Um, and I'm getting really good coverage on those black letters. That is weeks coal. And it's got a little bit of variegation. It goes from like a black black to kind of a charcoal black, which is really pretty. And once again, I cannot manage to get my fabric straight in my key snap. So that snake is a little wonky, but <laughs> he's not quite as wonky um, as when he's charted. So um, I worked on this for a couple of nights, really enjoyed it. And I was really glad that I pulled this back out. Um, I've been thinking a lot about my Adam and Eve pieces that I have started or that I want to stitch. And also in the um, trend of trying to finish things, I'm also kind of looking at some of these smaller pieces that would be a relatively quick stitch, easy to finish, etc. So we'll see. I may kind of rotate that back in a little bit. So then, I worked on that um, 
Thursday. Yeah, Thursday. And then last night I decided to get out Mystery 9 because I really wanted to get back to this and work on this some more. So, and again, it's in the Q-snap all jacked up because I've been beating as I go, which is not a good idea. Unless you're working on a scroll frame or working in hand, I would not recommend beading as you go because you're just asking for trouble and then you have to do something wonky like this where you have a Q-snap on two sides and then the rest of it just hangs free. So, but I would like to get this corner done. Um, this part here, as you can see, is already beaded. The corner pool is mostly done. Um, and so actually up here, it's got more of this um, brown and then the metallic that's next to it. So you can see, I just have to kind of complete the pool when Martina um, erases things out of the her patterns in order to break them up into sections, sometimes she would erase a little more than maybe she needed to. So had I known ahead of time that I needed to just go all the way around with that, I would have done it at that point. But now I have to kind of go back and redo that. So. Last night, I worked on my stairs, and that is all done in rice stitches. Really pretty. I love the effect that it gives and the texture that it gives there. So those are all done. Um, you can see that these urns have two little beads up at the top and there's going to be two little beads at the top of each of those urns but i figured i would do them when i do these urns on this other side so i just love how that looks these little kind of bricks with the metallic over them so pretty anyway so i gotta start on the espalier trees and a little bitty start going down the side. So my goal for this weekend is to get the espalier trees done. Um, they are, they're not bad, but as you can see, all of those little leaves in there are all um, black work, back stitching lines. So it's, those get a little bit tedious, but, and then there's beads. And the beads on these are kind of a dark, dark blue. And the beading is different in every corner. So over here on these trees will be a different color bead. So that's where I'm at one quarter completely done one quarter almost done i say almost but it's all relative right and then i have the two corners at the bottom and on the bottom i have not done the beadwork in here so that all still has to be done when i get down there and then i have the center to do but i think it's looking really pretty So, and it's difficult to tell in my photos of this, but the fabric is actually a very, very pale lavender. It's called lavender mist. And when you look at it against the Q-snap, you can tell that it's not white, but it's really hard to pick that up on the camera. So. And this is actually the called for lemon. And I've been watching, um, I was kind of binge watching uh, Christine stitch all the things and her videos. 
and she just showed, uh, she just a couple videos ago did one on how she organized her Chatelaine kit. She's starting Poison Garden. And she talked a little bit about how she did her threads and, you know, got her everything sort of set up, which was a, a brilliant idea. So she used one of those uh, Paco thread organizers and um, yeah, super brilliant. I just leave mine in the floss away bags that they come in. They come on a big ring from European cross stitch. I just left them in there and um, that has worked for me on all of my chatelaines. So that's just what I do. And otherwise I just sort of fly by the seat of my pants. Um, and she, uh, she also did, uh, showed her tacky bob that she got for doing her beading. Um, I originally started out when I was uh, starting this project and actually when I was doing uh, MIDI mystery one, I started out using a tacky bob. I stopped using it because this may sound dumb but I got concerned that because it is so sticky I got concerned that it was taking the finish off of the beads I don't know that it does plenty of people use tacky bobs and are super happy with them it just made me nervous so um, when I bead this is how like by the seat of my pants I am when I bead I have um, I have a little paper mache box that's about this big that a friend of mine gave me that I use as my orc container I take that lid which has a lip on it and I lay it right here on my chest with some beads in it and that's how I bead Total professional so um, take what I say about tacky bombs with a grain of salt um, anyway but if you're thinking about starting a Chatelaine if you're nervous about starting a Chatelaine please go take a look at her video um, it's really good about how she organized her kit and everything and um, I highly recommend it so and of course she's got me so itching to buy the kit for Poison Garden because I really want to start it. Um, but I also have like a, a million Chatelaines already started and I need to get this one finished. So. But yeah, I want it bad. And um, so what made me think of all that was that so this fabric like I said is just a very very pale lavender but it's all one color it is very subtle um, I think it's a good background to the piece there is someone on the in the Chatelaine support group that is doing her poison garden on um, what she said is a like a pale kind of sage green I think and um, and I thought, ooh, I really like that idea. Like rather than going with a stark white, I really kind of like the idea of doing a very pale, pale, pale green for it. Um, pale, like this is pale. Um, not modeled, not, you know, that kind of look because I think it's too much for Chatelaine's for the most part. But I thought, mm, pale green. So yeah anyway I'm just gonna have to um, wish for it <laughs> so all right that's all that I have to show I am going to go out and run my errands and see if I can get the stuff that I need to do my finishing I'm gonna continue to stitch on mystery nine this week um, I'm really pushing to get that uh, that corner done I don't know that that'll happen this week, but I'd really like to get that corner finished 
then I might rotate off to something else, but then I want to come back and get those other two corners finished because ultimately I would really like to have this piece done before my birthday, which is um, end of August. You might remember that last year I started Egypt Garden on my birthday. That was my birthday start. So I'd like to work on another shadow lamp or possibly start Poison Garden. So we'll see, but I gotta get this done. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing and liking and leaving comments. I really, really appreciate it. And I appreciate all of those that take time to support FlossTube, watch FlossTube, give shout outs to other floss tubers. I, I just, I think that the floss tube community is fantastic and um, it's a real shame that there are some people that have kind of spoiled it for the rest of us. But um, yeah, anyway. So thank you for watching and subscribing and liking and commenting and all of that good stuff. And show notes can be found on my blog, cozyegg.cozyeggdesigns.com. And um, you can find me on Instagram and Pinterest and Ravelry and all of the places is Cozy Egg. So thanks guys, bye.